So today we're talking with Brent Montoya, who's the site superintendent on our oceanfront job on the Central Coast, and we wanted to talk to him a little bit about all the caissons that are going in on this foundation. Thanks so much for talking with us today, Brent. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I wanted to get started by talking about how many caissons are required for this particular foundation. Well, yeah, on this particular job, we are putting in 40 caissons of various depths. Um, we have uh, four different caisson designs, which are labeled A, B, C, and D for the plans, and they have different diameters on them, and those different piles also have different depths of drilling that we're, uh, we're trying to accomplish. Why do we need so many caissons at, at that particular job site? Well, the thing is about it is... Uh, the deck is a podium deck on it, which is an all concrete, and there's also a base flood elevation that we're trying to achieve, um, meaning that we, because we're on the ocean here in a seismic event or a tsunami event, um, the water table could rise and probably will rise. So this house sits uh, about four to five feet above that high point of the base flood elevation. Um, so you can almost consider it, it's, it's a concrete deck uh, suspended nine feet up in the air, essentially. Amazing. Um, so how does a soils engineer determine the correct depth when you're drilling below the water table like you are? Well, the soils engineer comes in and geologically tests everything and takes test holes and pilots, and then he comes up with a soils report. And per that soils report, uh, it gets uh, shipped off to the structural engineer, and he works with that information and it comes up with the size of the piles or the caissons and the depth of them to ensure that in a seismic event, uh, this you know large concrete structure above it will, will stand. Wow. So tell me some of the unique challenges of drilling caissons on the beach versus creating a caisson web on a hillside. This job has a, a, a lot of challenges in the sense that it's, a, it's all sand. You have a very high water table uh, being right here on the beach, and you're pretty much surrounded uh, by water. So we have to do what's called a, a wet drill uh, process where they use a drilling fluid to stabilize the hole. So what we do is where we're going to drill our hole, we pinpoint it um, with the serving, and we have a pin stake in there, and then there's a, a large bucket-type auger uh, drill that goes ahead and starts drilling that out. Well we build a berm around the whole entire case on case. We fill that with this uh, thick uh, fluid. It's got a, a real high viscosity rate on it. And what that does is as they're drilling and they're pulling out sand material and getting, um, you hit water about four to five feet in the ground here. So as you start hitting that water and you're pulling that sand up and out, the fluid is draining down into that hole to try to help stabilize the hole and keep the hole open so that as you get into the deeper depth, you you don't have a caving, which which can can you know it can be costly. So um, wow. those, those are some real real, real challenges with with uh, doing a, a a wet drill in this sense. And then the other big challenge uh, I would say is the 60 foot deep ones because you have a three foot diameter cage that is going that is 60 foot long. So it, it, it's challenges from the beginning to all the way setting that cage. Uh, you, you can't bring a 60-foot cage in here on the truck, so they have to bring it in in two pieces. Then we have to assemble that cage uh, together and tie it all off, and then we need to bring in a large uh, boom rig with a 100-foot boom on it and just to be able to get that, that cage high enough up into the air so then that, that way they can start dropping it down into the hole, and then on top of that, you need that specialty uh, type of crane so that it has a long enough hose that they can drop that hose all the way down into the hole as well when they come to fill it with concrete. Incredible. So do the cages themselves need to be made of a different material, or does anything need to be added to the concrete to protect the case homes against potential salt water damage? Well, yeah, there, there's, there's, uh, um, we use a Zypex, which is a rust inhibitor, and then we are, we're also using a, uh, a hydromix in some areas of the concrete work, but specifically for the caissons, we're using a Zypex, which, which goes ahead and, and makes it denser so that you, um, uh, your rebar doesn't rust out on you, essentially. Wow. 